If the only bike trials riders you know are Danny McCaskill and Fabio Widmer, this video is for you. If the only competition trials riders you can name are Jack Carthy and Charlie Rolls, this video is for you. I went to the Bentonville Bike Festival and stuck around to see the world's best trials riders competing. As a seasoned trials rider, my mind was completely completely blown. In this video, you're going to see some of the best riders in the world, and I'm going to tell you about each one of them. Stick around. There's some serious riding. Two more things. Number one, I'm totally aware that there are other riders on the World Cup circuit that are incredible and deserve your attention. They just didn't show up to Bentonville. And number two, there's a good chance I'm going to pronounce the names wrong here, but I'm doing my best. The thing I was most excited about in Bentonville was getting a chance to see all of these riders ride in person. I had been following most of them on Instagram or wherever I could prior to the event, but this was the first actual time I'd been in the same place watching them ride. And you know I was looking forward to seeing Jack Carthy ride more than anyone else, and he certainly did not disappoint. Being able to see this guy just go massive on every single thing and make it look effortless was insane. This next drop right here that he's about to do, he's dropping down onto a jersey barrier and he does it like it's nothing. It was so incredible to finally get a chance to see him ride and just the way that he took each section apart and just kind of made his way through like it was no big deal, just mind blowing. And until you see some of the other riders go through it for context, you don't realize how incredibly hard some of these sections are. It just kind of looks like he's rolling along. Now the one bummer when it came to watching Jack ride is that he had a mechanical a couple sections into the event. So this is really all I got to see was a handful of sections before he was out for the day. This is just footage from the qualifying event in the beginning of the day. And then he didn't ride the final because about three sections in, he had a malfunction where he ripped the brake line out of his front brake. Real bummer. But thankfully there were all kinds of other riders that were throwing down and that's where we're gonna look through the rest of this. This is Vera Barone. She's the world champion right now for the women's class, and she's also the four-time Spanish national champion. She's riding the expert lines here as part of her class, but she actually had a perfect day, meaning that she got the maximum amount of points that she could possibly get in all of the sections. She absolutely crushed everything. And it was so incredible to actually see her ride. I'd seen a handful of videos of her and some of her competitors like Nina Reichenbach. I'm gonna list all of these riders in the description as well. So you can go check them all out on their own. But to be able to see her ride, incredible. And the other thing I learned at this event is Danny Barone is actually Vera's brother. So this rider right here is Danny Barone. He's the junior Spanish champion. This is actually his second season in elite and he got second place at the first World Cup of this year. So there's some pretty big stuff happening for him. He's just joined the elite ranks as of last year. So far this year is going great. And you know, if this event is any indication, he's definitely on the right track. In fact, he was the only 26 inch rider to qualify for the finals of the event. So he really threw it down here in Bentonville and put on quite the show. He was the lone 26 inch rider in the finals. And it's really fascinating to see a 26 inch rider go up against a bunch of 20 inch riders because in my mind, there's always been sort of a natural advantage on 20 inch riders. But when you see him compete against the 20 inch riders, there's not a whole lot of difference. He totally threw it down. It was incredible to watch him ride. You know, the one thing about watching this stuff happen on video is the elements that you may not actually see going on. Of course, you can see the distance of the gaps or the heights of the obstacles and stuff like that, but what you can't tell is that it's almost 100 degrees. It was in the mid 90s during this entire competition. We're in Arkansas, so it's super humid and hot. On top of that, all of the ground that they're riding and taking off from is gravel. So it's loose gravel. You don't have maximum traction. And yet these riders are just boosting out of it like, like no, no big deal at all. It's really incredible to see how stuff that was slowing everyone else down in some of the other categories didn't even phase these riders whatsoever. This is uh, Sergio Yungaris. I hope I got that name right. He is one of the few 26 inch world champions other than Jack Carthy. And he actually had kind of a rough day here in Bentonville and didn't make the final, but I got a chance to see him ride. And it was so fascinating just to see another top 26 inch rider besides Jack and Danny go at this course. You could see that he was riding really quickly through the sections and with good precision, all the 
different courses that they had at the event had so many perfect wheel placements that you had to get just right. And you'd have to hit one like this and then turn right back around and then come back and land perfectly in another location. The amount of perfect wheel placement that was required for all the sections in the event was just staggering. And to watch these riders just nail perfect balance lines like it was nothing time after time after time, incredible to actually watch this go down in person. This next rider here is Oliver Vidman. So he's a two-time world champ and two-time European champion. He also didn't make the final from what I remember, but he had tons of confidence and he went absolutely huge. One of my highlights from being at this event was actually watching him ride after the event was over. He started picking out all these crazy lines that were super scary. This next rider, I don't know if I can do their last name, but his first name is Samuel. He's a Slovakian 13 time national champion and he's ranked in the top five in the World Cup. One thing that I really noticed about his riding was just how smooth he is. And he has a YouTube channel as well, which I'm gonna link below. But watching him ride with like solid power, but really super smooth, was really one of my favorite riders to watch for the day. Just like how mellow he kind of looked. It looked like everything was just easy for him when he was riding, just lots of pop. I know that this is actually probably one of the more efficient ways to do this movement. It still looks so cool when they do that wheel swap when they're going up on big stuff. That's the one thing I really noticed when it came to all these elite riders was how efficient they were with their movements. There's no extra energy being put out. They're just being as efficient as they can. And if going to the front wheel instead of the back wheel can sometimes make things easier, that's absolutely what they did. But when it came to watching Thomas Peckhawker ride. This guy is all about power. He's conservative with his use of the power, but when it comes out, this guy sends it so hard. He did this one side hop during one of the sections and it was shoulder height and he did it like it was nothing. And I actually went up to him after he finished the section and I just said, man, I'm gonna be thinking about that side hop for a long time. And honestly, I still am. It was massive. This guy goes absolutely huge, like it's no big deal. Every single thing he did, just massive. So impressive to watch him ride. He's an Austrian rider. He's a world champion and just unbelievable watching this on just pure power on display. Massive, massive. <laughs> Everything he did just, ridiculous. It was a real treat watching him ride for sure. Just, you know, gap out to this little uh, stump 10 feet in the air. Just everything, just so precise, so much power, so huge, big consequences too. I mean, you don't want things to go sideways when you're on a Jersey barrier and jumping up that high but no one seemed to have any problem when it came to the bigger moves and all of the balance lines. It was all totally capable for people. This is Borja Canejos. I don't even know what to say here. This guy, I thought he was gonna win, to be totally honest. The way that he made such short work of all the obstacles and honestly, watching him ride the courses, he was doing lines that most of the other riders were not attempting. There were certain lines that you would have to do a big hook up or a big gap to, and no one else would go at it the way that he was going. Just the amount of control that he has on the bike, the precision that he has, and the speed at which he rides the sections. I was watching him ride quite a bit, and he would make it through most sections in about a minute 30, sometimes even less time. He connected so many lines together. He blasted through gate after gate, just like he was racing through the course. And it was just incredible to watch how much speed he brought with him. And I think a big reason for that is that when you do things like that, you have more time. If you come up to an obstacle or a gate that's really challenging, you can really put all of your focus in. So it was fun because you could kind of tell what was actually challenging him as a rider versus what was well within his means because he would blast through everything almost without giving it a second thought. And then he would save his extra time for the stuff that actually was challenging for him. But 
watching him ride here, it didn't seem like much was challenging him. Uh, just amazing what he was capable of. And, and like I said, the precision and speed that he actually had as a rider. I honestly thought he had the win for sure. And uh, it wasn't the case, but incredible to watch him ride. Up next, we've got Alejandro Montalvo. He had absolutely massive moves. He was one of the few people that was getting this really, really tight hook during this particular section, but everything he did was absolutely massive. He's a junior world champion, a Spanish national champion, and he's currently ranked number two in the UCI for 20 inch. He rides for Jitsi and watching him take that bike and just send it was incredible. I actually rode this exact same bike for quite some time. And so I think I had even bigger perspective of how that bike rides and what he was capable of doing. It was just incredible. Again, super precise in all of the stuff he was doing, super confident, absolutely massive moves. He definitely took his time through the sections, but just as a rider in general, super smooth. Just watching him kind of put stuff together was really fun and enjoyable to watch him ride. And I think he's still pretty young. I think we're gonna see a lot more of him. And I'm really excited for that. He's one of the 20 inch riders that I've been following for quite some time on Instagram. So I think I was actually most excited to see him ride on the 20 inch side of things because I've been following him for so long and watching him ride. It's always such a treat when you get to see these guys ride in person because, you know, Instagram is one thing, but to see them actually in person is pretty incredible. He's also the only person to make it through this section here with time to spare. And this is how the section ended. So Alejandro took the top spot in qualifying, but in the final, it was all about Aloy Palau. And the story behind his ride in this event was pretty incredible because he had every mechanical known to man, including a flat tire, which you can see right here. And you can tell that he's pretty upset. And I think uh, probably a good thing that I muted the sound for this part because uh, I think my Spanish isn't that great, but I'm pretty sure he had some choice words for that flat front tire. In any case, pretty incredible because the fact that he chose to continue riding in this particular section gave him the win. If he had just put his bike down because he had a flat tire and walked out of the section, he would have not won the event. The fact that he continued to ride and complete gates in that section is what gave him the win. So even more incredible that he was able to keep his mind in check and continue riding, but he had multiple flat tires and mechanicals throughout the day and he just kept persisting and put in the work section after section, collecting points as everywhere he possibly could. And that really impressed me. My only impression of him prior to this event was the single clip that I saw as I was looking at the riders who were gonna be competing he had a really bad crash at the World Cup in Victoria not too long ago. And uh, it's super scary if you ever have a look at it, but uh, the fact that he came back and, and rode like this, I mean, what do you even say about a hook like that in a competition? Just incredible. He was one of the few riders that actually nailed that hook perfectly and made it through this section. I think a lot of the elite riders didn't actually know what to expect when it came to this competition. In fact, the last time there was an elite level trials competition in the United States was the year 2001. So it's been a minute and I got to give props to Kenny Belay, Mike Friedel and the whole team that brought this event together because I think they really gave these elite riders a run for their money. In any case, big congrats to all the riders. They put on such an incredible show. If watching all of this bike trials action is getting you fired up to ride, here's a video right here that will help you get started as a trials rider. 